Hello and welcome back to another video on Node.js developers. Today we're going to do something different, which I think is going to be very exciting and definitely helpful, at least to some of you. Most likely you can already guess what this video is going to be about from the title alone, but just to make sure that we are on the same page, today we will be comparing newly released Shopify's flash list versus an old but widely used flat list. Now, you may be thinking, what is there to compare? So let me quickly go over that. First of all, we won't be comparing the ease of use because as you will see a bit later, it's basically the same. And it's the same because flash list is used Using Flatless API. So the thing that we care about the most and the thing that we will compare in this video today is the performance. Because if you use Flatless before, you might be familiar with its, I would even say, very bad performance. And Shopify is claiming that Flashlist is a lot better at that. But claims are only claims until they're proven, right? So let's put it to the test and see whether Flashlist is actually more performant and if it is, by how much. Firstly, before starting anything, let me quickly explain how are we going to measure the performance. One of the key metrics in measuring the performance of the application is the frame rate. We want the app to run at 60 frames per second in order to give the users an impression of smoothness. For you to better understand how different frame rates look like, here's a good example demonstrating that. As you can see here in the middle, at 24 frames per second, the animation look rather stuttery and not very pleasant to look at. But here on the other hand, at 60 frames per second, the animation look really smooth and very pleasant for the eyes, which we should aim for every time when we are developing applications. But in React Native's case, applications have two threads, the UI thread and the JavaScript thread. And we need to make sure that both of them are running at 60 frames per second or at least as close to it as possible. But why JavaScript thread is important to us? Well, it is important because JavaScript thread basically drives the UI. So let's say if JavaScript threads frames per second are dropping, especially if they are reaching zero, the application will be completely unresponsive and you won't be able to press anything or do anything, which of course is very bad. But now how can we track our application's frames per second? Well, for that, we could simply enable uh, the performance monitor in our React Native application but that would be rather hard to properly test and drive results from in our case. So we will be using React Native Performance Monitor Flipper plugin, which I will show you a little bit later. Now, our next step is to make a rough plan for our testing case. First of all, we want to use a low-end device because of course, on high-end newly released phones, everything will look a lot better, a lot smoother, but not everybody will have those phones. So we want to make sure that on average, everybody can have a nice experience using our application. So in our case, we will be using Motorola Nexus 6. Now, the second thing is that we can't draw conclusions just from running the test once. So we will be running the test a couple of times and using the average results at the end to compare everything. Now, let me quickly show you the table that we're going to use for logging the test results. So as I said, we will be running five tests and we will track average JavaScript frames per second, average UI frames per second, JS thread lock. So basically when it's completely dead on uh, reaching zero and the total performance score for the flat list and for the flash list, which at the end will show the average results for everything. Of course, for every test, we will have completely same conditions to make the comparison as accurate as possible. And last but not least, for every test, our goal will be to never drop the UI thread below 50 frames per second and JavaScript thread should never reach zero frames per second. So after a long introduction, finally, we can start our comparisons. And the first thing that we will do is test the performance score of the flat list. Okay, so here's our setup. Now let me quickly go over everything that you see here in order to give you a better understanding of what's going on. First of all, here's our application. And up top, you'll see the title of the list that we are currently testing. We chose to use the list of cryptocurrency coins. Here, you can see the Flipper application that I was talking about and React Native Performance Monitor plugin. I'll show you a bit later how it works, but for now, here it is. Now let's go over and check out the code. We have simply flat list, the title, we are rendering the item. And here is the list of coins that I told you about. And as you can see, it's pretty long. Now let's go back and I will showcase you how will the testing work. Well, in here, I simply have to set the limit of how long I want my measuring to last. I will click start measuring. Then I can do whatever I want in the application. It will log here everything. And after 10 seconds, because I've set it here like that, I will see the end results. And as you can see here, average JavaScript thread frames per second were 49, average UI frames per second were 49 as well. The JavaScript thread never reached zero and the total performance score is 82. Of course, if I do more here, the performance probably will drop or maybe no, I don't know yet, but we'll see. 
Now, in order to automate the scrolling, because we should do that, I will have a simple command here that I will run and it's this command. After running this command, the list will scroll automatically approximately 100 positions. So that's what, how are we going to test it and automate it? We'll run it three times in one test. So I will do all the testing part behind the camera in order to maximize the performance and simulate the real world environment as best as I can. So stay tuned and we'll see the results very soon. Here are the results of our test for the flat list. And from the first glance, we can safely say that they are pretty bad. Our average JavaScript thread frames per second were around 9.28. Our average UI thread frames per second were around 52. Our JavaScript thread were dropping to zero for approximately six seconds every time. And our average performance score were 21.8. So yeah, they are pretty bad, but don't forget that we were testing it on a very, very old phone, which is of course having a huge impact on the final results. But nevertheless, let's try to install the flash list and test that. So to do that, let's go to their website. And here you can see everything uh, about flash list. Now we need to scroll uh, to the last part of this website. And here are the instructions of how you need to install everything. So let's copy this one, go to our code, open the terminal, run this command. Once it's finished, go back to the website, copy this command, go back to your code, paste it. Once that's finished, we can go back like that and then start on implementing and changing this flat list to the newly installed flash list. To do that, let's scroll up and go to their documentation because I want to show you as well how easy it is to understand everything here and how easy it is to navigate. So let's go to fundamentals and to usage. And here is a simple example of how to use it. As you can see, it's almost identical to the flat list. So let's copy this line of code, go back to our code. Let's paste this in. Now let's go back and copy this part of code. Let's go to our code. And here I already prepared flash list title. Let's paste this, fix the identification problems. So what do we need to change? Data, it's the same. So let's pass here coins. Now render item, again, completely the same. So let's copy this, paste it here. And the only other prop that flash list is suggesting to add is estimated item size. And it is a number that hints flash list about the approximate size of the items before they are rendered. It uses this value to decide how many items it needs to draw on the screen before the initial load and while scrolling as well. So if the sizes of items are different, take the average value of them. So in our case, this will be 70. Let's save it. And of course, before running and everything, we need to delete our previous list. Let's go to our application and we can see that now we have flash list. So let's also enable performance monitor. Now again, I will do all of the testing behind the camera in order to have the same conditions as it was for the flat list and simulate the real world environment as best as I can. So stay tuned and we'll meet very soon with the results. And here are the final results for our test. As we can see, flash list is clearly a winner here. Average JavaScript thread frames per second were 41.56 compared to 9.28 of the flat list. So that's very big improvement. Average UI thread frames per second were a little bit better, but not something huge. We never dropped below 50 here as well. So that's good. Our JavaScript thread never reached a zero even for a single millisecond. And here we had 6.2 seconds on average for every test. So that's a huge improvement. That means our application will never freeze. And lastly, the performance score is almost 80 here compared to the 20 of the flat list. Again, we did everything with the same conditions, same phone, everything completely the same. So here you go. I'm not going to draw any conclusions to which list is better in general, but looking solely at the performance, flash list is clearly a winner here by a mile. I highly encourage you to try the flash list yourself as it is, in my opinion, a very big step forward for the React Native community, which we should say a big thank you to Shopify because they are putting so much work into making this community even stronger and better. That being said, I hope that this video was interesting to you, valuable, informative, and in general, enjoyable to watch. I hope you like this new format. And as always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't stop coding. Bye.